Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here's another interesting product that I came across recently. It's an antenna analyzer by Feature Tech. Now it also incorporates features such as a frequency counter with field strength meter, along with capacitance measurements when in LC mode. In analyzer mode, this covers from 160 meters or 1.8 megahertz, right up to the 70 centimeter band at around 430 megahertz. Now it has the same kind of form factor as the MFJ259, but the 259 doesn't cover 70 centimeters, plus the 259 is almost double the price. Now in the box, you get a couple of adapters. One is an N type to BNC, and the other is an N type to SO239. You also get a little DC power cable, so you can power it from a battery or a shack power supply. Now there's no internal rechargeable battery, but you can install regular batteries inside for portable use, and I'll show you shortly where you install them inside. Now, the whole case is made from metal and the front panel hosts all of the controls. There's a main tuning dial at the bottom, which has a plastic outer control, which controls tension on that rotary dial. I guess you can get a finer resolution by being forced to turn it slower. There is a main on and off switch and up and down buttons for changing bands, and then two further push buttons at the top where you choose between HF, VHF or UHF. In the middle, there's a backlit display where all of the live readings are shown. Now, what I was surprised about seeing was the antenna connection on the top is actually an N-type rather than the regular SO239 that we'd probably expect. I guess they thought about performance when hitting those 70 centimeter frequencies up at around 430 megahertz, as N-type is the correct connector to use for that band. Now, if you want to install batteries, there are two screws either side of the case. Remove these, and then you can carefully separate the two halves of the case. Now on the back plate, you'll find two fixed plastic battery holders. Each of these hold four AA sized batteries, so you need a total of eight batteries to use without an external power source plugged in. Now you can also see the circuit boards here inside while I've got it apart, but there's nothing that you need to do to them other than to have a look at them. Now I don't have any AA batteries to hand, so I'm going to use one of these excellent portable batteries from BioNO. Now these batteries are awesome, and I have a couple of them which I'll make a video about in the near future. But if you're looking for a great portable battery, then these are definitely the ones to get, especially from QRP radios right up to 100 watt transceivers. So with the power plugged in, we can turn on the analyzer by pressing in that red power button. Now by default, the backlight does not turn on, but to get the backlight to turn on, you have to quickly press and hold that up button directly after pressing the power on button. Now once turned on, you are presented with two options. Either press up to enter into antenna analyzer mode or press the down button to enter frequency counter mode. Now I'll quickly show you the frequency counter mode first and with a handheld radio close by transmitting on 145.450 megahertz, you can see the screen on the meter showing a relatively close frequency along with a field strength reading. Now this is not lab style equipment, but it gets you in the ballpark figure. Holding the down button while power on will put the device into inductance measurement and then powering on while holding the up button will put the device into capacitance measurement mode. So let's just hook up an antenna to see how well this performs in antenna analyzer mode. I'm going to attach my NFED half-wave antenna, which is a multi-band antenna that can be used without a tuner on certain bands. And it's resonant on bands like 80, 40, 20 and 10 meters, for example. Now once on, make sure that the top band buttons are in the right position. I'm going to be testing HF first, so that right grey button must not be pushed in. You can then use the up and down buttons to choose the band. Now there's a little chart printed on that top case which shows you which letter corresponds to which band. So for 80 meters, we need to make sure that B is selected. You can then start turning that tuning control to adjust the frequency, which you'll see on the screen. The SWR is shown in real time, and as you adjust the frequency up and down, so will the SWR. Now the screen shows some useful information. Now here is the current frequency, and then here is the current selected band letter. Here is the complex impedance, and here is the impedance magnitude. 
And then over here is the real time SWR reading. Now, when I switch up to VHF, the display shows the same information as it did when we were using HF. But when we switch up to UHF, we only see an SWR bar graph and an SWR reading. We don't get any of that impedance magnitude or complex impedance readings. Now, for peace of mind with regards to how accurate this analyzer is, I compared it to a new addition to the shack, which is an SV4401A vector network analyzer, which in fact I'll be doing a review of in the near future. But a quick heads up, it's absolutely awesome. Now, after comparing the results with all of the supported bands, I'm happy to report that the results are extremely close, close enough to be relied upon if you're going to be using it in the real world while testing antennas or even assisting with building antennas. Now here's a screenshot from the VNA showing the start, middle and end of the centi centimeter band compared with photos taken of the same frequency on the analyzer that's shown in this video. Now as you can see, they're extremely close. So personally, I wouldn't have any issues in using this analyzer and being confident that it works close to where we want it to. Anyway guys, if you've got one of these, let us know down in the comments below how you get along with it. And also, if you have the MFJ version, which is similar to this, it's not exactly the same, but it's quite similar. Let me know how the two compare, because I don't have one of the MFJ ones. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.